Hi everyone! I'm going to do a coastal seascape painting today and you might want to grab a journal or a piece of paper or a canvas, some knitting, whatever project you're working on, or maybe you just want to watch me paint. Either way, you can use this video as a way to stay at home with me. So I am just taping off the edges here so that I'll have a nice um, white border around my painting, my finished painting. And um, this is just washi tape that I have reused again and again and again. Now the only thing is, is the adhesive does, um, well it gets less strong, it gets a little weaker as you, the more you use it. So I'm really burnishing it down with my thumb there just to really make sure that it's adhered to the paper. Um, and you can use masking tape, that's another option. You can use artist tape. Um, but uh, this is just simple like paper washi tape uh, and I think at one point it might have been pink or some of it might have been different colors anyway. I've reused it so many times um, that it has a completely different pattern now. I'm using Liquitex um, brand paint and I'm just going to choose a few colors and put them out here on my palette. This is just a like a wooden palette that has years of paint on it. That is cerulean blue hue. Next up is thalassinine blue green shade. Next is titanium white and I usually use a fair amount of um, white when I'm whenever I'm painting so I will definitely make sure that I give myself a good amount of the titanium white here on my palette. Next is Hooker's Green Deep Hue. And this green, um, if you're familiar with it, it's so dark, it almost looks black when I put it on my palette. It's a really deep, deep, pretty green. And I will be um, putting a bit of coast into, like actually land into my seascape today. That's why I'm adding some green. This is Vivid Lime Green. little bit of raw umber. This is burnt sienna. And the last one is Naphtal Crimson. Um, my studio is quite dry today. I have the heater on, so I'm just going to give it a little misting of just water. And that just helps keep the paint nice and moist for me. I have um, a couple, just a little piece of paper towel that I'm putting there underneath of my rag that I will use to dry off my paintbrushes. And I'm going to use a couple of flat brushes today. And I'm really working on trying not to get caught up in the details of um, these works on paper. so. Um, I'm trying to choose a brush that is big enough that I won't be tempted to put too much detail in. The paper that I'm using today is um, by Fabriano and it's actually Desert brand, um, Desert Art Supply Shop in Canada. Um, but it's by Fabriano and it's 160 GSM and it's a mixed media paper. So you can see I've added another piece of washi tape there. And that is just so that I can get a nice straight line for my horizon. 
It's a trick that I use a lot. So I'm just going to paint along um, while I talk and you guys can let me know if you have any questions at all about the video um, in, the, in the comments below. Uh, it's really informal today, us just hanging out and um, working on projects together or uh, maybe you find it nice and relaxing to watch, um, you know, to watch the painting kind of come to life before your eyes. So yeah, I'm just going to paint out the sky here. And um, I like to try to get my sky nice and blended. Um, and I'm going to add just sort of a little bit of white just to kind of lighten by the horizon. Uh, and I'm going to add some swooping clouds to this piece too. I'm based in Nova Scotia and one of our favorite places to hike is Herring Cove Provincial Park and it has these beautiful big granite boulders and rocks along the shore and um, it's quite a beautiful hike and so today's painting is inspired by Herring Cove Provincial Park in Nova Scotia and right now like a lot of the world um, we are not allowed in our uh, parks and on our beaches and um, it's it's been tough it's been really tough not being able to get out and um, to, to get into nature you know we're allowed in our uh, we're encouraged to stay I should say in our own neighborhood and so in the meantime whilst we can't go I'm planning on just painting some of my favorite scenes from some of my favorite beaches and from some of our favorite hiking areas. And I'd love to hear about some of your favorite hiking areas and your favorite beaches, so definitely let me know in the comments below. So yeah, just peel off the tape and then you have your nice straight horizon. So I'll be more or less sticking to this one brush um, and I do have the other one that's slightly larger. I'll be mostly sticking to those two brushes for the entire painting but I will include some ink and some markers toward the end. So I just want to um, grab some of that nice dark deep blue and um, that's what I'll use to create my horizon line for the um, for the ocean. And as I move closer toward us, toward the shore, I'm just going to vary the different um, shades of blue and kind of give it a little bit of visual interest, you know, where the sun might be hitting the water or where um, there may be some deeper spots or where wind might, you know, cause a little bit of current on the water. And um, I'm just going to paint in sort of the, the shoreline here. And it's, like I said, a really rocky coastal shoreline. And those lines just kind of give me an idea, I'm not being really precise, and I'm trying to keep it uh, as loose as I can without incorporating too much detail, just kind of hinting and making the suggestion of, um, of you know, variances in the water. I've been really uh, working on being looser when I am working on paper and in my sketchbooks in particular. So if you have any suggestions for me about how I can incorporate that more into my work, please definitely let me know below.
I've been wondering if people are interested at all in a little seascape tutorial. I don't know if that's something that you guys would be interested in at all, but if you are, let me know and let me know the idea or the, the type of tutorial that you'd be interested in. Would you be interested in like a small seascape or like making a greeting card for somebody or do you want to work on canvas? Um, I'm just I'm just kind of trying to gather some information about what you guys would like and what you might find fun um, while we're all spending a lot more time at home. And speaking of spending a lot more time at home, I don't know about you, but my family's been watching a lot more um, Netflix and Prime and um, anyway, I'm, I'm kind of running out of shows that I want to watch. Some of the ones that we've watched recently, um, we really liked Fleabag on Prime and Absentia, which was really good. Um, I think I've got another season or so of Mr. Robot to go. And then over on Netflix, um, I don't know, I just feel like we've watched a lot over the years of what they already have available. Um, Ozark, uh, we're watching season three right now. Um, and I haven't watched Tiger King, but um, I think I'm one of the last people to not watch it. I think I probably will, but I don't know. I've just been hearing so many things about it. I don't know if it is something that I really am interested in or not, but um, I love all the British crime dramas and all the Scandi crime dramas. So if you have any suggestions for me, please let me know because I feel like I'm running out of ideas. I try to use um, the rag that you can see there in the lower right hand corner is just a microfiber rag and I've had it in my studio for years and years and years and um, it's a quick dry so I just use it to when my brushes like when I'm washing them and when they're clean but still wet um, I will use it to dry them off although you can see that I have used it when they're not so clean as well with all of the blue stains on there. Um, so the, the shoreline at Herring Cove Provincial Park is really rocky, a lot of really smooth um, granite boulders and um, I find rocks can be kind of tricky to paint uh, just to kind of get the angles and the shadows and the highlights right. But like I did say um, previously, I am going to use some markers and some ink to kind of finish off this piece because I, I really like once the paint is dry I really like incorporating ink into the pieces just to kind of push those shadows deeper and to bring out those highlights a little. Right now I'm just sort of working on the shape of um, the landscape here in the foreground. Oh, and I am using a reference picture as well. Um, it's a picture that I actually took when we were out on a hike recently um, before the pandemic. Um, but yeah, it was it was quite a nice bright sunshiny day and um, it was just a nice, nice hike, lots of fresh salty air. So this brings me right back there. So hopefully looking at um, this painting come to life will I don't know, give you a little bit of vitamin C as well. In the meantime, while we're all um, sort of laying low and not doing all of the things that maybe we'd love to do otherwise. But this is important, don't get me wrong. Laying low right now, staying home when we can, as long as we're not on the front line. Right now, that's the most important thing that we can do. I find creativity really helps me on those days where you're just feeling a little restless or you're feeling a little trapped or you're feeling a little lonely or however you're feeling. Um, I think that 
art can be the very best form of therapy and it just kind of lets you lose yourself and find yourself and um, I don't know I just find once I start painting like the time just dissolves and um, I don't know somehow it just it makes my brain feel calmer and brings me a bit of peace so hopefully it does to you as well. If you would like to use this um, video to paint along with and to make a, you know, a painting inspired by this one that I'm doing here, by all means do so. Um, I only ask that you, um, like if you do make one and if you share it online, tag me, I'd love to see it and I'll be happy to share it in my stories as well, especially on Instagram, I'm on there a lot. Um, I'm on Facebook as well, Kimberly Eddy Fine Art and um, Twitter as well. I'll leave those linked below if anybody does uh, decide to give this a try for themselves. And you know, like maybe you have a different medium that you like to work in. Maybe you like markers or maybe you like watercolor or oil or gouache. Um, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it's nice to use whatever you have on hand, whatever you prefer. Um, and um, I'd love to I'd, I'd love to take a look at what you're making. I get asked fairly regularly why I like using acrylic on paper, and um, I guess there's a few different reasons. First of all, I, I I usually use a lot of really vibrant colors in my work. I like my work to be really saturated, and I like the saturation that I get with um, the Liquitex acrylics and with acrylics in general, really. Uh, I like the Liquitex ones, I do use them a lot, but there are other great brands out there and even um, some crafting acrylic and even the acrylic that you can get at the dollar store, if, um, if that's what's available to you, you can make some beautiful work out of whatever kind of paint you can get your hands on. Another reason why I like to use acrylic is that they dry so quickly. Um, I really like to get down, you know, block in my color and then come back and do some layers over top. And I really like when it's dry and I'm able to come in and like almost immediately afterward or within a few minutes and my work that I've, I've just laid down is already dry. I tend to work quickly and I just really like that I'm able to do that. It can be a little more challenging when you're trying to get uh, your paints blended together. You have to work much more quickly than you would with some other media, but um, I actually, I enjoy that part of it. I enjoy that once I have something laid down, it dries really, really quickly, and then I can come back in and add details. Uh, and then, you know, if it doesn't dry quickly enough, if I've put a thicker layer on, I keep a hairdryer in my studio and I can very easily just haul out the hairdryer, give it a little bit of air, and um, like a minute later it's dry. And then I can go in with my markers or um, like to finish off with the final details, or I can add another layer of acrylic. And um, I just, I really enjoy that aspect of, of using acrylics in my work. Another thing that I really enjoy with acrylics is their opacity. Um, some do, you can get transparent acrylic colors, but um, the, most of the ones that I use are opaque and I like that I can go in, I can lay, you know, block in a color and then I can come in with um, like a new layer and it's opaque and so therefore I can cover up any of the color that I, I laid down first. That I don't want to be showing through so it's opaque and you can cover up which also allows you to cover up mistakes so it's very forgiving in that way. I like that um, I can use water to uh, clean my brushes with acrylic. Uh, cleanup is e fairly easy compared to say oils for example um, and and that makes cleanup easier too. If I happen to spill paint on the floor or on the wall um, outside of my studio, um, then I can. It's easy, pretty easily 
cleaned up with water as long as it hasn't dried. And actually when it is dry, in some cases depending on what, um, what you've spilled it on, you can actually let it dry and then you can use a little paint scraper and scrape it off. So I do like those things. Another thing that I really like about acrylic is its permanency. Um, once it's dry, it is permanent on whatever substrate you have painted it onto, whether it's wood or canvas or paper, um, glass. Uh, you know, by that, what I mean is that you cannot reactivate it with water the way you can with some other media like gouache or um, watercolor, for example. I'm just working on some low growing ground cover there in the foreground. Um, like there's sort of gorse growing in between the rocks. And then there's a little scraggly little evergreen tree, fir tree probably, um, on the right that I'm going to put in. I still think I am focusing more on the details than what I want to be. Um, I really am trying to focus on being looser with my brush strokes, but I keep coming back to those little details, things that catch my eye. So I don't know if you guys have any suggestions for me as you see me painting this, definitely let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Many of my videos on this channel are actually time-lapse videos and um, so the, the paintings kind of appear very quickly and as if by magic. It's not very often that I include a real-time video or a tutorial on my channel here and I'm wondering if you find this type of video worthwhile. Are you enjoying it? Especially now that many of us um, have more time at home and are trying to find ways to fill our days. Is this something that that you would like to see more of. Do you think it would be helpful to have a step-by-step -step tutorial of a seascape or a beach painting? I think a lot of us find peace and calm in being near the ocean and painting the ocean and thinking about the ocean. So maybe actually having a tutorial of a nice ocean painting, a step-by-step -step that we could create together might be a good idea for a future video. I'm just adding a few final highlights here with the paint, although I am going to bring out my markers and my pens very shortly to boost those highlights a little more and to push the shadows and just kind of um, uh, punch up the contrast a little bit. You might have noticed that I have two pots of water there and one is sort of my dirty water and that's the one that I'll I'll dip my my dirty paintbrush into and try to get most of the paint off on that one and the one on the right there is my cleaner water so really I'm just doing a final rinse in that and then I clean off my brush or dry off my brush with my rag and uh, and then it's actually pretty clean um, clean enough that I can put it away and not have to do a more deep cleaning
And there's that scraggly little evergreen tree or bush, I guess. It's quite small um, that I'm just kind of putting in there, the base of it. And uh, it's just a little tree. And like so many trees or bushes just along the coast, they're pretty scraggly and they kind of, um, I don't know, it's the salt water keeps them quite small and sometimes the wind will bend them in all kinds of interesting um, uh, ways and shapes. This one's just still pretty small, so it's pretty straight up and down. So I'm going to use a variety of markers and some are by Faber-Castell, the Pitt Artist Pens, which I really like. Those ones are Indian ink and they are waterproof. I have um, a marker, a couple markers that are zebra markers, uh, mild liners they're called, and um, those ones, I'm fairly certain those ones are permanent as well. And the other ones that you'll see, um, there's some a gray one by Desaire, and it's a twin tip, so it's got um, like a bullet point and a brush point. And um, that one, I believe, is water soluble. So I think actually it is like if I were to take a wet paintbrush over it, I can actually blend it, um, which actually can come in handy sometimes when you're finishing off paintings as well because remember when you wet the acrylic it won't blend so this just allows you to kind of push around the shadow a little bit um, by using a water soluble ink. So that first one there is the one by Desaire that I was talking about that is actually water soluble. That is the zebra uh, marker, the white one there. And then I've got some, um, the Faber-Castell, the Pitt Artist Pens. And I really like the Pitt Artist Pens. They have a nice fine brush tip on them um, that I find, I don't know, I just find them really easy to use to add some little details. And um, I'm just kind of putting in some of the, the shadows and the cracks and the rocks here. And I'm just defining the boulders defining some of those shapes. There's some that are quite smooth and some that have some angular cracks in there as well.
This is one of my favorite markers. It's actually by Pebio and it is an acrylic marker. It has acrylic paint inside and um, it has a nice tip actually, which um, is fairly fine. It's a 0.7 tip and it's great. Like I, I really use it a lot. I'll use it a lot in my sketchbook. I use it a lot in my paintings in general. It's fabulous for doing um, wave details it's great for doing highlight details. Um, I actually only have it in white, but it's available in lots of other colors. Um, and um, I don't know, I, I always get, keep it in, I have a travel kit that goes with me everywhere and I keep it in my travel kit and uh, it's, pr it's one of my favorite of all of my art supplies. And I'm just going to tidy up my horizon there a bit with my Pitt Artist Pen. And it just allows me to really kind of define that horizon and also be a little more, um, uh, I guess, just more accurate with the straight uh, line there. And just adding some variance in the watercolor. And this um, very dark blue. I don't think they actually have colors on them. It's um, it has a number two forty seven is. And using that dark line um, just at the very edge of the horizon, there it really pushes the horizon a little deeper in the depth of field. And that's it so yeah we can pull off the tape and you can see what i was talking about the adhesive is um, not as strong as it once was it's almost time to replace some of these pieces of tape i like to reuse them because it's just more environmentally um, conscious to do so um, so i use them as much as i can but you can see that some of those edges has let a little bit of paint bleed through but i don't uh, i don't let that worry me too much and um, basically what i'll do is i'll take a little bit of white paint and just go along the edge and tidy that up and in fact um, so i can use my titanium white here but in fact in my sketchbook if this happens if it's something that um, is just for me i don't worry about it too much and actually i can use that pebio uh, titanium white acrylic marker that i used in the highlights on the rock there i can use that as well to tidy it up and it works quite well So that's pretty much the end of the painting video today. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, it was great to have you stay home with me and um, great for you to keep me company while I was doing this painting. And I hope you got some work done on your project, whatever it was that you were working on. Definitely let me know. I'd love to hear in the comments below. And if you did a version of this painting as well, give me a tag, give me a holler, and I would love to feature it in my stories on Instagram. 
and um, yeah, let me know if you'd like a tutorial and we can do this again sometime soon. And in the meantime, I hope that you stay safe and that your family stays safe, that you find some time for some creativity and that you'll join me here again on another day. Bye for now, everyone. See you soon.